sorry. All right, so we're going to show you how to use the uh, rug cleaner. Um, it's normally stored in the basement, and what you should find when you go to use it is that this container would be empty and not connected into the unit. Reason is that uh, there's a little leak in that unit that uh, if you leave this connected in here, it'll pee water on the floor. Uh, also, what I've found through experience is that if you leave the solution in here for any length of time, it gets kind of funky. So I always prefer when I'm done cleaning the floor to empty out this container and sit it on the shelf. You'll also find in the laundry, or not the, the storage room, the uh, rug cleaning chemical, which might be in a green bottle like this, or who knows what color it'll be, but it'll say something like Bissell rug cleaner. Uh, first step is you add the rug cleaner to this level here in this bottle. You unscrew this cap and this cap quite often is going to be stuck to this surface so you unscrew it and then you just sort of pry it to get it off. Okay, so you pour in the rug cleaner well, Line. Okay, and then you can add water up to this level here. I'll just get you to pause it at this time. Uh, when you're adding water, it's going to foam, so you got to wait till the foam goes down. Or what you can do is run water and let the foam run over the top, like so. On. Okay, put it on pause. Thank you. This thing has a little angle, it doesn't matter which way it goes on, so it can just screw on any way you want. Screw it on tight and attach it onto the rod cleaner. This end goes in here, slides down, and you're done with the liquid. Um, before using it, I also like to check the bottom section here. There's two latches, one on this side, one on this side, and then this thing lifts off. This thing should be empty, um, because when you last use it, it should have been rinsed out. You can see at one point somebody left uh, stuff in it, and it left this scuzzy mark on here. So each time you use it, um, or when you're finished using it, you should empty this out. And I'm just showing you that it's empty to begin with. There's also an area here which tends to get scuzzy. And I'll go into more uh, how to clean it once we use it. So I put this on, and I put these two ratchets on. And now I'm ready to go and do some mud cleaning. So I'm going to turn this thing here at 90 degrees, or 180 degrees. And that gets the cord off quickly. And then I'll turn it back so that when I put the cord back on, it'll be in the right position. Okay, put it on pause, please. Thank you. Okay, so there's two foot levers here. The red one turns it on and off. And this gray one uh, allows this, this uh, handle to lower down. So after having plugged it in, you'll push the gray one down and lower the handle down. Get it into position and then press the red button. It'll make a noise, and that's the uh, vacuum running. You'll be going forward, and once you're at the far end, you'll squeeze this finger trigger here and hold it in. And as you do that, the liquid starts to flow. You can see it, the, the carpet being wet there. That's the liquid flowing. And as you're bringing it backward, the vacuum would be sucking the liquid up. And you go back and forth doing that numerous times, always pushing this lever as you pull it towards you, then letting go of the lever, moving it forward and back a few times to suck up that liquid. Now I'll turn it on, pressing the red thing. You can 
see as I use it, you can see the, the, the stuff coming up here. Uh, it sucks it into this tank. Uh, there, if you use one container of water, the tank will take that full container of water, like you don't have to change it part way through. Although sometimes what you'll have is uh, foam and bubbles coming out of here, and that's the indication that maybe it's time to dump out the tank, seeing as it's mostly full. Uh, okay, so uh, now we'll put it back on pause and I'll... Okay, so I finished uh, washing the rug. Um, this area here, we'll have to see how it looks once it's dry. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, clean the unit. Um, I let it sit here for quite a while and so far it did not leak any water so who knows maybe it's fixed itself but I'm still needing to take this tank out uh, for a couple of reasons one is the uh, potential that it would leak uh, and the second is to uh, dump out this chemical so it doesn't get funky actually a third reason is that I like to uh, put plain water in here after I've washed the rug and go over the rug with the plain water to suck the um, soap solution out so that's what we're going to do now. Um, I took this off the unit by just lifting it straight up. And now I'm going to take the, um, the drain tank off, loosening the two straps, reaching here and lifting it up. And you can see the scuzziness of the liquid in there. Now we'll head over to the sink. You can put it on pause. Okay, so now we're going to open the tank up and dump the liquid out. Rinse it out a couple times to get the uh, soapy solution out of it. So, sometimes this screen could get scuzzed up, but uh, I've only really seen that when I leave solution in the tank for some time that that'll get messed up. So, oh and yeah, and, and, you know they'll talk about using hot water. It, it doesn't really matter because the water cools down pretty quick anyway. I just use cold water. So I filled it half full of cold water, I put the lid on, set it to the side. Now we take this tank and at the back it says empty dirty water here, that's this thing here. So you turn the tank over and out the dirty water. Then I'll, with the, hole, with the uh, tap, I'll rinse out this area because so, sometimes there'll be crud that's caught in here. And rinse that out. And then I put water back into the empty dirty water area. Slosh it around to loosen up stuff. And it up. There is a little foam filter here. Um, very seldom would I remove this to clean it out. I guess it might as well because there's a little bit of crud on it here. You can, you can see some, um, I guess, carpet fluff. So I'll rinse it off. And then this goes back in like that. Anyway, so now this is rinsed out. You see again. The one time somebody left some stuff in here that's left a permanent stain that you can't really get out. Although maybe if you used Dawn you might be able to get it out. Anyway, so back to the unit, please. The, uh, the second part, of, or the other parts of cleaning are, they talk about reaching in here and scooping out any stuff. Very seldom have I seen anything in here, but I guess there could be stuff in there. The other thing to do is to lift this little lever up and to take this section off the front of the unit and sometimes this will be crudded up so you could rinse it out. This is clean though so there's nothing really to do. The only other thing to look at is these brushes underneath could sometimes get um, gunked up and if so you, you move these two levers away from each other and push down and then the brushes the brush comes out and you could clean it off but right now this thing is perfectly fine so I'm just going to put the brushes back 
And then I'm going to hook this guy on. These fingers go in downward, like so, and then up. And then this guy clicks into place. This thing gets put on top. The two things on either side get clicked in. This has got that clear water in it. I put it in the unit. And now I'm going to again go over the surface like I did before. And this time I'm going to be sucking out the, uh, the soap uh, residue. So I use the gray lever to lower the handle. I press the red lever to run the unit. And then I squeeze the trigger when I'm pulling backwards. If you've got a real bad stain, you, you could keep the trigger pulled as you go back and forth over the stain. That will just continue to dump solution onto it. Whether that works any better, I don't really know. So away we go. Put it on the pot. Okay, so we finished uh, rinsing the carpet. And now the same procedure. I will take this tank off by lifting these two latches and bring it to the sink and uh, dump out this remaining water. Um, then I'm going to uh, take this tank off and it's uh, empty already because I used up all the water uh, cleaning the floor. So I'll just leave the tank off the unit uh, and empty and of course having rinsed out the soap. Then I'm going to unplug the cord. I'll just point out that the proper way to unplug the cord is to grasp this heavy part. Um, if you like buying new equipment, you can grab here and yank, and that'll break the cord here. But if you like to keep stuff for a long time, you grip it around here, and that's why they make this on the end of the cord. And then you'll wrap the cord around the handle, like so, and then put the unit away. That's it. Thank you for watching. Something else you can do when you're done with the unit is get a piece of paper towel and mop up the water that's inside this, uh, this area here. Otherwise it's just going to take a long time to evaporate and could get a little funky.